Okay, in this video we're going to discuss the creation of a schematic. We'll also cover high-speed PCB design um, with the identification of differential pairs and the marking of high current traces. Uh, we'll also demonstrate how to create a simple schematic design using KiCad and, and um, we can talk about the factors we need to consider when designing a schematic for high-speed design. Let's go ahead and start with the schematic part. First, you need to create a new project. So you can go up here to File on the left-hand side, click New Project. Then uh, choose the location uh, you want to save this new project and name it. In this demo, let's just, uh, we'll, we're going to name it LED Project. And go ahead and click Save. And so as you can see, the, the two files are created over here. And there are the layout file and the schematic file. So let's go ahead and open the schematic file first. And for this demo, we are considering a, a simple schematic for a battery a regulator and an LED. This schematic will be used to uh, light up a simple LED. Okay, click the symbol um, up here, and a window should pop up. There it is. Search for a battery among the components. We will select a single cell battery, as you can see over here. And go ahead and click the screen to place the battery on the schematic. Okay, let's repeat the same action to find a resistor. Select the one you want and place it on your schematic. Let's now choose an LED and two capacitors and regulators. You can see over here an unpolarized capacitor, which is uh, basically a ceramic capacitor and a polarized capacitor, which is for electrolyte. Um, let's see. Well, let's take the unpolarized one for now. Now, we require a regulator, which uh, we, we can create. This is very simple. Click Create, Delete, and Edit symbol on the top. A window should pop up. There it is. On the uh, left top side, click File and select New Library. For this example, uh, we want to name it LED Project and save it to the Library Table Project. Now, go to File again, select New Symbol, and search for the library you just created. And go ahead and name the new symbol, such as, in this case, LM7805, which is a 5-volt regulator. You need to create a symbol for every component. Every component has its own data sheet and its own um, uh, serial part number. So you need to find the data sheet for, for the part number. You can see it on this screen. This is the data sheet of LM7805. And you need to see the pin configurations between this data sheet, which is registered by the manufacturer. In this case, there are four different packages. These packages depend on the, uh, the, the manufacturer part number, or MPM. So, um, uh, you'll have to decode the MPN, which will give you the correct package. For now, we will require these three pins, input, ground, and output. You can see there are more connectors, such as tab, um, and they are all ground. In this case, you'll have to create one more pin to have an additional pair on the board. Uh, ground will have two pins, which are pin uh, 2 and pin 4. Pin 1 will be input and pin 3 will be output. Let's start and move the components aside. We will use the Add Graphic Rectangle to Simple Body option on the right side. But before that, right-click and select End Tool. Um, you, have to, uh, you have to select the grid first. So right-click again on the screen and make sure your grid is set to 50 mils. 
Now you can click this box and draw. Right click and select end tool. And right click the border of the rectangle, select edit rectangle options, fill with body background color and, and click OK. On the right hand side, click the A1 symbol add pins to the symbol and, and drag it to the screen. Here the pin name will be input and the pin number 1. Place this over here. here. The next pin is output and pin number 3. Right click and select rotate clockwise. One more time, rotate clockwise. Then you need two more pins which will be ground. The first one will be pin 2 again. Right click and select rotate clockwise. You can also rotate by pressing R on your keyboard. And repeat the same action for pin 4. This is completed. Pin 1 is input, pin 3 is output, pin 2 and 4 are ground. And let's save this by clicking save all changes on the left hand side. Once this is saved, you can import this into your schematic file. And go to the main schematic file on the right hand side, select place symbol. A window will pop up where you can find the LED project. And you can see LM7805, the symbol we created. Select it, click OK, and place it on your schematic. Now you have all the symbols required to proceed. You can then place these components properly and, and make the connections. Here we can zoom in a little bit. On the right hand side, select place wire. Now over here, click this symbol and, and then click on the other side. This is how you can form the, the lines to connect your symbols. When you're done, you can right click and choose end tool. And you can see the small square over here on the, on the line. It means the line is not connected. So select this line and delete it. Again, select place wire and make the connection. And then you can repeat it everywhere it needs to be done. You now need to place the ground terminal. Click ground option on the right hand side and click the screen. The choose power symbol window will appear. Uh, search for GND, select the symbol and place it on the schematic. Select place wire again and connect the negative to the ground. Right click and select end tool. The connections are done. Don't forget to save the file. As you can see, there is a question mark next to the U symbol. It means you have to annotate the symbol. On the top, there's an option called annotate schematic symbols. Go ahead and select it and choose Use the Entire Schematic and Keep Existing Annotations. Then select Annotate. Now you can see the question mark has turned into a number. The tool automatically gives numbers to all the components. Again, don't forget to save. The schematic is complete, but you need to assign footprints. We show you how to in another video since you might have to create a new footprint. The footprint information will be given in the data sheet. This is how you can create a simple schematic. You might also have to generate a bomb or bill of materials which tells you which components are in your schematic as well as the similar types of components you have and um, gives you a complete list. On the top there's an option called bomb. Click it and this window will pop up. Select bomb HTML grouped by value. In the command line section, you can see .xls. Make sure that you have extra .xls before you select generate. This will generate a file in the folder of your project. You can see over here you have uh, the reference, the quantity, and the value of the part. This is your complete list, the complete data of your schematic that indicates which components you'll, you'll uh, request. Now uh, we'll show you the basic factors you need to consider while designing any schematic. Let's close the schematic and open one of the 
schematics we previously created. This is a schematic uh, of a microcontroller that is interfacing with the, a uh, FTDI chip and a USB. USB is basically high-speed signal, so it normally operates from 12 megahertz to uh, 14 megabytes. As you can see, there are certain power lines here and here. These lines can carry power up to 1.5 amps. You need to design the specs to meet the uh, this requirement of 1.5 amps. You can also see that this firewall is coming over here. So you can mark this particular part as a power line, but not this part, which is also connecting to the same line. Here, the voltage is uh, 5 volts. So the current will be 5 milliamps. It's not of much importance. This can be a, a simple trace of 10 mils or 8 mils. This connector is marked as power pin because 5 volts are directly going to it, and we don't know where this will be connected. It will depend on the, the person who will be using this. By marking the pin as power pin, we indicate that the trace needs to be sufficient to carry 1.5 amps of current. Okay, let's move on to another sheet. This sheet has the FTDI chip, which converts the input serial signal into the USB differential signal. The other yellow rectangle is the USB connector. Here we are using USB 2.0, which can operate from 12 megahertz to around 240 megahertz. You could also use USB 3.0, which can operate up to 5 gigahertz. Normally, we use differential pairs. Differential pairs are nothing but two lines carrying the same data in an inverted form with respect to each other um, at a, a particular point of time. You can see that we have diff DN90R and diff DP90R. These are the two pins that bring data into your IC from this connector. This is a negative line and, and this, this is a positive. For the USB, you need to maintain your impedance. Basically, the impedance varies at very high speeds, like in megahertz. So you need to take care of, of certain factors like impedance matching. So you need to take care of certain factors like impedance matching. For instance, um, this IC over here has input impedance at these pins of 90 ohms, as defined by the USB standard. The, the differential tracks should match this impedance. But in order to do so, there are certain rules um, that need to be followed, such as the width and thickness of the track. There's also crosstalk, which is nothing but interference on one line due to another trace which is close by. You need to maintain a specific distance between these two tracks. The width of each track should be as um, per the, uh, the requirements. The trace width and spacing for certain impedance may be obtained using impedance calculators. The length matching of these differential pairs is important because these two lines are time dependent or delay dependent. Um, a signal comes from a connector at a particular time and reaches its destination at a particular time. The signals from both these tracks should reach at the same time. If the lengths are different, and since both signals are on differential pairs operate at the same speed, this can generate a false signal um, at, you know, at the output. This is a power track which operates at 500 milliamps. 500 milliamps is considered high for the USB. We normally put less power, um, less current. 